If you've been waiting for me to trash a movie, the wait is over. I give you Hard Target 2. Target 2, a movie that is not a sequel to the first movie. It really should be called Hard Target 2, T-O-O, because it's really just about making a movie similar enough that they can use the title that'll get people like this guy to rent the movie because they'll give it a shot because they grew up watching the original like, hey, let's see if it lives up to it. It, of course, does not. And in fact, of this genre of bad martial arts movies that go straight to video that Scott Adkins stars in a whole lot of them, this is one of the worst. Uh, all of the tropes of that genre, guys doing flippy kicks and missing the guy's head, that's here. Plot points that don't make any sense, that's here. Useless fights that come out of nowhere that are just so forced, you got that in here. So real quick, I can talk about the good pretty quickly. The good, um, the main guy can do cool flippy kicks, which I do enjoy watching, and that actually goes a long way in entertaining me. It'll get a few points when I rate this mo movie later on. Um, there's some shots in it that are really cool and like people walking in slow motion with an explosion behind them. Cliche, but it does look cool. And actually throughout this, there's some shots in it. There's like a motorcycle chase in the middle of it. It actually looks like much higher production value than you would expect from this movie. And the shot is actually shot pretty well for what they're doing. And I gotta say this, it's never boring. They they cram enough stupid, unnecessary fights in the movie that there's always something exciting happening. And because these guys are so athletic and do cool flippy things, you're not bored, you're entertained by enough by what you're seeing in the same way that if I watch YouTube videos of guys getting kicked in the balls, I'll keep laughing, but that doesn't make for a great movie, it just entertains me in the moment in the same way that watching this guy do cool flippy things and explosions with people walking in slow-mo is cool and to look at. Not a good movie, though. From there, everything is terrible, though. <laughs> it's just just terrible. So, just, so we're clear, I reviewed Kickboxer Vengeance like three days ago. It's a kickboxer movie that went straight to video that has Van Damme in a smaller role, and I gave it a positive review. I'm easy to please. I am the target demographic to get people to rent this movie and be pumped about it and actually enjoy it. And I watched this movie and I could just, I just kept rolling my eyes, kept being annoyed because it made so little sense. There was so little thought put into the staging of things. Like there's a sequence in it where there's a row of like army guys trying to shoot someone in front of them who's running towards people that are right in front of the camera. And the people right in front of the camera, they're up here, are not supposed to die. And the guys with the guns just start shooting at the person that's in the middle. The people that we don't want to get shot are in the line of fire, and the movie doesn't address that. They would be filled with bullet holes if this happened in real life. It's called crossfire. Like, it, this is basic staging of action sequences. Like, if you were thinking the big problem with the original hard target is like, whoa, way too much plot here. Well, we're just thinking way too much about these deep characters. What? Well, let's simplify it to guy feels bad and gets tricked to being on the run. Period. That's the whole plot of the movie. That's what this movie is. And you don't need a whole lot of dialogue for that because it takes away time from seeing cool flippy things. In the backstory of this main character, it kind of gives it this sappy thing involving a friend of his and something that happens to the buddy. I mean, I don't want to spoil this for you, so I'm not going to tell you what happens. And throughout the, like, it's, there's no depth to it. It's just like one thing happens and the guy feels bad about it. After this montage thing at the beginning, the whole rest of the movie going an hour and a half longer, it keeps cutting back same exact two scenes of these two characters that are supposed to like remind you of how sad he is and it's like lifetime movie quality guy crying guy hanging out with his buddy going fishing it's like i mean just cheesy as can be lifetime movie character development and it's like one like two scenes that they just keep going back to to keep reminding you character development see he's got feelings there's more to this guy than just cool flippy things. He's got feelings and friends and emotions. The director appeared to get the notice that in all of your movies, you're supposed to have like three minute long takes because that's what movies do now. So like the scene where they introduce kind of all the main villains of it, the scene is three minutes long as it just kind of like pans around all the new, the bad guys were being introduced to as each one of them walks up, tells their backstory. I'm a father. This is my son. We hunt together and we wanted to be a part of the ultimate fight. Hunting people. Like, it, it basically plays out like this. 
I am the daughter of a rich oil tycoon. I love to hunt and men love me. And it, it, it just, each one of them goes through and states who they are the way that you would have like a summary on a web page and a press release of the characters. And then at the end of it, they do an action sequence like this that plays out like the end of Commando, which works in Commando because it's campy and he's just running around through an open field with a machine gun plowing guys down and then guys run out and then he just plows them down and no one can. There's an action sequence that's like two minutes long, one single shot that's like exactly like like this at the end of this movie where Scott Atkins is running around with a machine gun and guys just keep running out for him to be able to shoot them because they're doing this single shot thing so they couldn't stage anything better than this. This is a movie where there's a fight scene where there's two guys fighting in water and one of them pulls out a taser and is like using a taser while soaking wet while the wand is soaking wet and they're in like just in water the whole time. This is a movie where there's two people having a quiet conversation and then out of nowhere in the middle of this jungle three dirt bikes was flying over their head in an X as if, and we couldn't hear them before this. It was just like out of nowhere in a jungle where you'd be able to hear all of it. It's a movie where people are on the run for their lives and they have to travel 40 miles in a single day while people are trying to case them. They gain access to a four wheeler and two motorcycles and they leave all that behind so that they can run on foot. And the four wheeler and the motorcycle were also filled with weapons. They leave that behind to just take a crossbow with them. Why? Well, if you took a motorcycle, you'd be able to escape, no problem. If you're on foot, it's much easier for you to get caught. Like, that's the best explanation. The plot demanded it, so that's what happened. With movies like this, they try and get an actor or actress you're familiar with to kind of give it, like, validity. So they got, I believe her name's Rona Mitra. So she was in a bunch of stuff in The Zeros. I don't know what she's been doing the last five or six years. I know she did some action movies before, and she's terrible in this. She, later in the movie, gets in multiple different fights with people, and it's painful to watch because she's so bad at the fight choreography. Like, she's literally, like, has her arms up like this and then goes to throw a punch and goes, Ugh, like this, and swings her arm all the way around. Ugh, when she's throwing her punches, she rolls over a table and it, like, it's like this clunky, weird, awkward roll over the table as if she was running and she had to think before she did it. And she was afraid to hurt herself. It just looks terrible. In it, she's riding on her rich person motorcycle at one point in time, and she's, like, pushing buttons, and, like, guns come out of the front of it, start shooting, and it comes out of nowhere, and, like, she has, like, a James Bond movie motorcycle thing. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So the movie has the slow-mo action shot where there's, like, an explosion, and, and she's walking in slow-mo, unfazed by the explosion. The only problem is it makes no sense in the movie because someone shoots a missile at her. She doesn't flinch. She just keeps walking, and then it explodes next to her. She just keeps walking, and... Like, it's that cool action movie thing in a way that makes no sense because literally someone is trying to kill her, shooting things at her to blow her to pieces. Things are blowing up around her. Shrapnels would be flying away from this vehicle that just exploded. And she's just walking cool as can be away from the explosion just because that's what looks cool in movies like this with no thought of the absurdity in this specific scenario. The craziest thing about this movie to me is so it has way less plot, way less character development, way fewer interesting characters than the original Hard Target, which I said I love, and it's 15 minutes longer than the original. It just kind of keeps going on and on and on, and you don't even know, like, where is all this extra time because you don't have any plot to justify it. And so as you're watching the movie, you get to it, and there's like 15 minutes left, and it gets to the moment in the movie where normally the movie's almost over. So the bad guy has like a gun pointed to someone's head, the good guy's all by himself, all out of ammo, and they're on a bridge. And so I'm kind of spoiling this, but I can't imagine I'm actually spoiling this movie for you. So normally what happened at this point, our good guy walks out, he's been defeated. Blah! He's got a gun. He pulls it out from behind his head. He shoots the henchmen next to our main villain. He runs over, kicks the guy in the throat. Something like that. I don't know. That's a little bit of Die Hard. That's a little bit of the original hard target. The idea being that there's this moment that right there, normally you, you have the good guy outsmart the bad guys. This movie, no, that's not what happened. The good guy surrenders, walks up. The bad guy literally says... Ah, I need some entertainment. I'm glad you're here. Did you guys bring the beers? This is dialogue in the movie. He sits down, opens a beer, and he goes, I brought some entertainment for myself. Five people walk out to fight our main good guy. Our good guy, of course, defeats them. And then, like, and then it just keeps going. There's more stuff that happens, and you're just like, what? 
the bad guy won. He could have gone like, all right, and shoot the good guy. Plot done, movie's over, kind of a downer. No, he won. He just went, I want some entertainment. And then has people come in just for the sake of us to have a boss fight at the end of the movie. We get our boss fight. And then the movie's still not over. There's still like five more minutes of stuff happens of back and forth on this bridge. It's not plot development. It's not character development. It's just extra stuff that doesn't need to be there. And then the movie ends. And wow. It, it it's bad. It, it is bad by the standards of these direct to video things. Uh, it's one of the. At least it's it's funnier than most of them because it's so blatantly bad in its badness. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give this one a three out of ten because our main man does enough cool flippy things to entertain me enough. I thought that maybe I could. Is it? bad enough that it's good. No, it's not. It's just bad. He does some cool flippy things. Some of it, it you're just watching it going, oh my goodness, this is this is awful. Like the fights in it look like behind the scenes footage of stuntmen practicing choreography. So you're watching people that are really good at throwing punches and doing flippy things, but it's not shot well enough. To, and so you can tell that they're three feet away from the people. And like there's guys like throwing punches and the sound effects are off and they throw a punch and the guy throws his head back a little bit too late. It looks like that. <laughs> That's the movie you're in for, but not bad enough that you can watch it with your buddies and have a so bad it's good time. So all that said, I, if I'm being honest, I'm not going to watch this one again unless I'm in a really bizarre mood. You probably shouldn't check it out unless you love the novelty of these things, which I do. I knew this was going to be bad. I just, the novelty intrigued me, so I watched it. With that said, in the next few days, I'm going to put out a video of the top five Van Damme films. I love Van Damme, and there seems to have been some pretty good discussions about my videos surrounding him, so I thought I would do my five favorites so we can get a good discussion going on there. Please join that. Tell me what you think. Check out some of these other videos I reviewed uh, Jean-Claude Van Johnson, the new Jean-Claude Van Damme pilot for Amazon. Please watch my review, watch that video, and vote for it, because I want that to turn into a TV series. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please click that subscribe button to check out my other future videos. I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk about movies with you, so join us in the comment section. Tell me, what's your favorite terrible action movie? Comment below. Let us know. Let's talk about it. Thank you for watching.